I'm gonna get you out to the roads right now, and you are watching something out there, Katie. Yeah, I'm watching something, Cindy. Uh, 128 northbound in Peabody. Sky 5 is over the scene here after uh, exit 28 because there is a uh, deer in the roadway that they need to get out of the way. So a little slow through that stretch. This is where that is. You can see we're a little backed up there. DOT is on scene cleaning things up. All right, also in Reading, we have somebody changing a tire. 128 northbound and then south of there. Nothing going on on 95, 24 or Route 3 approaching the Braintree split. It's a 10 minute ride for you, Braintree, up to Boston. Live look at the gas tank, HOV lane is out of commission until we need it. And here's a live look at the Pike eastbound in Alston, Brighton. Looks good. Antoinette? All right, Katie, thank you. What is believed to be the first death of a supermarket worker in Massachusetts has the state issuing new guidelines to protect workers and shoppers. The eye-openers Matt Reed live for us in Salem this morning to explain. Matt? Well, Antoinette, these new guidelines include a cap on how many people are allowed to be inside the stores at the same time. The state is now limiting capacity to 40% of each store's maximum occupancy. These stores are also responsible for customers lined up outside, making sure they maintain appropriate distance from each other. And the Massachusetts Department of Public Health is also asking stores to designate one-way aisles to increase spacing between customers. And the state is asking customers to use store delivery services or curbside pickup if possible. These changes coming after an employee here at this market basket died after contracting the coronavirus. We're live in sale on Matt Reed, WCBB News Center 5. Some workers at the GE plant here in Lynn are planning to hold a protest later today to urge the company to manufacture more ventilators. This protest happening later this morning. Union employees held a similar one last week. They are urging GE to use now underutilized aviation plants like the one in Lynn to manufacture ventilators. Now, according to the company, GE's healthcare division has actually doubled the number of devices produced since the pandemic began. The Lynn workers are joining others around the country in today's protest. They are asking also uh, for more protection while they're on the job to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Live in Lynn, Sarah Kanji, WCVB News Center 5. Sarah, thank you. Some grim numbers this morning. The death toll in New York reaches the state's highest one-day total yet. But Governor Andrew Cuomo says there is still reason to be hopeful. Cuomo said 731 people had died of the virus Monday to Tuesday. But the curve of infections appears to be flattening, and physical distancing there is working. While there are 4,600 patients still on ventilators, the number is far fewer than the worst-case projections. Meanwhile, this morning, it remains unclear how long British Prime Minister Boris Johnson will remain in intensive care. He's said to be listed in stable and in good spirits. He's being treated for COVID-19, and the nation's foreign secretary is standing in for the prime minister in key meetings. Johnson said to be breathing on his own and not on a ventilator. The original epicenter of the coronavirus crisis is back open this morning. China has ended its lockdown of Wuhan and reopened its borders after 11 weeks. Residents there can leave the city as long as they were able to show a mandatory government data tracking smartphone app. Some flight attendants are getting a new accessory to their uniforms, a face mask. The union representing flight attendants says American Airlines will give their frontline workers protective gear. Wearing the masks will be optional. The union says 100 American Airline attendants have tested positive for the virus. The airline would not confirm that statistic. Count is underway in Wisconsin as it holds its primary election despite a statewide stay-at-home order. Voters wearing masks, standing in line to cast their ballots. Most polling places could open because they didn't have enough workers. In Milwaukee, for example, there are five polling places instead of the usual 188. No results will be released before Monday. Meanwhile, the path for both Democratic presidential hopefuls remains unclear this morning, but both are speaking publicly about the current state of the country. The person at the pharmacy, the bus driver, turns out to be pretty essential. Teachers turn out to be pretty essential. Maybe this is a time to rethink about what's essential, what our priorities are. We can take care of our health and our democracy. The idea of postponing an election is not possible. It should not happen. The democracy has to continue to function. Joe Biden remains the front runner, but at the same time, neither have enough delegates to win the nomination right now. The acting Navy secretary who called the ousted commander of the USS Theodore Roosevelt, quote, stupid, is quitting.
Secretary Thomas Modley submitted his resignation a day after that audio leaked. Last week, Captain Brett Crozier wrote a memo saying decisive action was needed to deal with the outbreak on the ship. The Navy removed him from duty days later, arguing that he shouldn't have publicized the memo. New data suggests black Americans are more likely to become very ill from the coronavirus. Doctors say that is because statistically, that community has more pre-existing medical conditions, less access to health care, and are more likely to have to work in essential jobs. Researchers tell the New York Times the disparity in deaths and serious illness is a reflection of, quote, entrenched inequalities. Grammy award-winning musician John Prine has lost his battle with COVID-19. The influential singer-songwriter was hospitalized hospitalized with coronavirus back in late March. He was put on a ventilator last weekend. His songs were covered by artists including Johnny Cash, Bonnie Raitt, and John Denver. John Prine was 73 years old. A healthcare worker from California covered in his protective gear is wearing a smile on his chest to help comfort his patients. Robertino Rodriguez works at Scripps Mercy Hospital in San Diego. He says he wanted to reassure his patients by giving them a glimpse of his smiling face, so he printed a picture of himself smiling and laminated it to his gear. So it's behind that mask. 6.53 right now, and two suspects are in custody after a woman was shot in the Lynn. This happened last night on Whiting Street. Police say the woman was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The two suspects were arrested after driving off into Saugus. Their names and ages have not been released. Right now, a man is in custody after a vicious assault at an MBTA station. Police arrested 29-year-old Glenn Villarreal. He reportedly attacked a victim at State Street Station Sunday night and forced the victim to withdraw money from an ATM. State police were investigating after a man's body was discovered on Revere Beach. It was found yesterday morning. The person, an adult male, but no other details have been provided. Police believe the man may have washed ashore. They're now trying to determine the cause of death. Prosecutors say the truck driver accused of crashing into a group of motorcyclists in New Hampshire had a number of drugs in his system. According to the toxicology report on Vladimir Zukovsky, those drugs included fentanyl, morphine, and a chemical found in cocaine. Seven of those motorcyclists were killed in the crash in Randolph last June. Prosecutors claim Zukovsky would often take drugs before starting work. His request for a bail hearing was denied yesterday. Tonight marks the first night of the Passover holiday. It begins at sunset and lasts through April 16th. The holiday marks the exodus of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt back in 1200 B.C. Though it's traditionally a time when Jewish families get together, many are turning to virtual seders because of the ongoing